Hello, everyone, and welcome to another session with Learn at Nostar. In today's session, we're going to write a SQL query in which we're going to extract the numbers and alphabets separately from an alphanumeric string. So we are going to take the example of this table called employee, and we have a column which seems to have concatenated data with the, from the employee ID and the employee name. So if we take a closer look at the data over here, we can see that the first part is numeric, and that seems to be the employee ID or the employee number, and the other part is alphabetic. So the logic that we're going to use to write this query is that we are going to replace first all the numeric characters with an empty space and then we would be left only with the the alphabetic part which is supposed to be the employee name once we have the employee name then we're going to replace the same set of characters with empty spaces in the original string so in that case now it would be replacing all the alphabetic characters and we would only be left with the numeric part so it might all seem confusing to you right now so let's get started with the query so that it becomes easier for you to understand so the function that we're going to use to achieve all this is known as the translate function. It is similar to the replace function. So replace function itself by its name suggests that we have we are going to replace some characters by another set of characters. Translate works in the same way. So in using the translate function, you can replace a set of characters with another set of characters. So let's write a query using the translate function. So trans late and then you have to give the column name on which you want to perform that operation so employee the next part is the set of characters you want to replace so we first want to replace the numeric characters because there are a limited set of characters we only need to specify the 10 digits that can occur in this particular string so we are going to give that and now we have to replace it with empty spaces or empty characters. So in SQL Server, it's not really possible to replace it with empties because you have to give a replacement uh, pattern, which is of the same length as this pattern over here. So whatever we specify, we have to specify of 10 characters. So in this case, we are going to specify 10 spaces and then later we can trim the spaces uh, if they're not needed. Now to specify 10 spaces, what we can do is simply type in 10, uh, 10 spaces. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And close this bracket. And here we are. And then let's just put a comma over here. Now there's another way to give this length of spaces because how many times would you type? Uh, we will see that when we come to extracting the numeric part. So let's first run this query and see what are the results that we're getting. So execute. So what we have got is we can see that we have got the alphabetic part extracted and we also have some space over here because the numeric portion got replaced with spaces. So obviously we need to apply a trim function on top of this. So Let's just trim this whole thing and give it a name, proper name. And now let's run this SQL query. And we have the employee name. So it's not the employee ID, my mistake. Employee name. All right, so now we have the employee name that we have already extracted from the employee string. The next step for us is to extract the employee ID, which is going to be the numerical part. So we are going to use the same function, which is going to be the translate function. Now, whatever we have, uh, we have extracted in the employee name, those are the alphabets that we need to replace. So we have to specify those set of characters which we need to replace and these set of characters would vary by the record that we are working upon. So it is kind of dynamic 
That's why we have to use this whole calculation that we have performed over here again. And the output of this, which is similar to what we've got in employee name, would be replaced by spaces in this original uh, string. So what we are effectively saying is that now we are going to write a function which is going to translate all these alphabetic characters, S, M, I, T, A, and H, in this original employee string. So the last part as we can see the smith part of this string would be uh, converted into spaces and we would be left with the numeric part similarly for allen ward and so on so to perform that let's start with another translate statement so what we are saying now is that uh, we are going to translate okay translate and we have to give the column on which we are going to perform this operation. So this is going to be again the employee column because we need the whole length of the string. So employee. The next part is what are we going to replace? We are going to replace whatever has come in the employee name column. So we have to repeat this whole statement again. All right, so we have to replace all this statement, whatever is the output of this statement. And with what do we need to replace? Now, a condition, as we mentioned earlier in SQL Server, is that you have to specify the same length of characters. So we do not know for sure what is the going to be the length of this column because this is the output of the earlier calculation. So we have to dynamically now calculate the length of this column as well. So to do that, what we can do is use the length function. And then we have to again repeat this string. So we are basically now finding out the length of this column. So S, M, I, T, and H, this would be five. And we have to put as many spaces. So space, these many spaces. So instead of actually going and typing the spaces, because this has to be dynamic, if you use the function space, and in the argument of this function, you just need to specify the length or let's say that um, uh, accounts to 10. So this basically interprets to space 10. So this would convert to 10 spaces and so on. All right, so this is what we are going to convert it to. And now let's just close our brackets. All right. And now, okay, give it an alias so that we know what we have computed, employee ID. And now let's execute this. So now you can see that the function has worked perfectly and we have got the numerical part as well. Now on top of this again, because there's a space, we need to apply a trim function. So we can apply a trim function and we would be rid of any of the spaces that came in the employee ID column. So this is basically how we can extract the numbers and the alphabet separately from a column that contains a combination of numbers and characters. Now this can also be done very easily using the part index function. Uh, if we are sure that the first part always is numeric and after that no more numbers would occur in the second part. Uh, this approach works very well if there's any number occurring in between. So let's say we had 7369SM1ITH, then this would have taken out the one as well and separately in the numeric portion and it would have separated the alphabets altogether. But let's say we are sure that only the first portion would be numeric and we just need to identify where this alphabetic characters would start and we can cut the string at that particular point. So for that, that requirement, we can use the pat index function. Now using the pat index function and by creating a user defined function as well, we can perform the same task and replace any of the numbers occurring anywhere in the string. So that can be done as well. So we'll take a look at all those approaches as well in a future video using the pat index function. This was basically to show you the use of the translate function. Um, 
If you want to see how this can be achieved in later stage, then we have posted a post on our blog and I would put a link down in the description so you can go check that out. It is based on similar logic wherein we first convert the numbers and we are left with the alphabetic part and then we convert that set of alphabets into spaces. So it's it's a nested translate or convert function which is more applicable for data state. So you can check that out as well. I hope Hope you found this video useful if you did then please do subscribe to our youtube channel because we'll be posting many more such videos thanks a lot for watching this video goodbye stay safe